Yo, what's up, guys? It's the Insane Gang Manic. Yeah, that's what the name I was going with. I actually like that name a lot. Now, are you real with you? I feel like that's the perfect mixture of what I wanted to be called. Well, actually, to be fair, because I wanted to be called the Gang Freak, but because of the whole thought process I went into when making the second, uh, making the first channel on my YouTube channel, calling it the Game Manic, I've gained a new appreciation for calling myself Game Manic. So, the insane Game Manic, I feel like it's the perfect fusion of my old and my new self. So I can be better. I was going to do the episode reviews and badges, but I figured we're starting to get to the more interesting parts of the anime. So, for me, I think I'm Gucci. Um... So here's the thing with this week's episode. I think this episode is going to make a lot of people happy because it acknowledges continuity. It acknowledges the trainers, the fact that he fought Lieutenant Surge before. He makes reference to it multiple times. We get to see the silhouettes of other the gym leaders. And the episode kind of goes to explain to everyone that, like, gym leaders and trainers are on the same tier. Even though Ash at this point is considered a champion... Although he's not treated in the same level of champion as I'd be curious if they're even going to reference that. So a lot of people are happy because of continuity. I guess the reason why I'm not as like excited is because it's Kanto continuity, which to me is like the most boring of continuity. <laughs> like, like to acknowledge Kanto continuity doesn't mean much to me. Now if you were acknowledging Hoenn, hell, at this point, any other region, if it was Hoenn, Jodo, I don't really care that much because Jodo was like a was actually like a smooth continuation. But if you acknowledge Hoenn, I would take Hoenn, Sinnoh, Unova, Kalos, Alola, like any of the other continuity I'd be cool with. Specifically what I would prefer is if it's anything from Hoenn, uh, Unova, or Sinnoh. Those are like the three I would be the most interested in seeing because I think Kalos and, and Alola are too new. Also, I have like very little emotional attachments to those. And Kanto to me is just too easy. And I guess the problem with the anime with me, because although the continuity and acknowledgement is cool, and the battle was great, I appreciate the battle for two things. One, you didn't do the standard fucking Raichu versus Pikachu trope. Man, I, you don't know how much I get tired of that. That every time Raichu's on screen, he always gets relegated to rival for Pikachu. I like the fact that Gengar was the one that took him out. I like the fact that they gave Electrode a bunch of shine. Because Electrode is another gimmick Pokemon that every time he shows up in the anime, it's usually for some sort of gag. So having him for a gym fight, I think this is the first time he's been used in a gym fight. Maybe against Watson. Watson, I don't know. Watson, I think it was like Magneton and like Manetric. I don't even think. I think this is the first time he's been used in like a legit like, gym fight where he was the star Pokemon. So I'm very happy that Electro got a lot of shine because he's a Pokemon I've kind of grown to enjoy. Um, I think they handled Ash using a psychic type well, gave Ash his strategy where he does, like, ridiculous things like using the Iron Tail to stick into the ground to disperse the energy from the Volt Tackle and stop Raichu at the same time. And although it didn't work, or even the fucking cool spinning move where he, like, uses Iron Tail to spin and he rolls up the goddamn wall with Pikachu and fucking lands properly. I like the battle. I don't, I don't get twisted. And I like, uh, is it Bisky? I think it's Bisky or P PC. I forget how to pronounce the name in Japanese. And it depends if she's uh, reoccurring. If she's not, eh. But, I, you know, I would like her to be, but you know how, <laughs> you know how the Pokemon anime is. So, it's not that I don't like the episode. I don't want to get it twisted because I have a few friends who are very happy. One who's a huge Lieutenant Surge fan and a bunch of other Raichu fans. And I'm a Raichu fan myself. It's a cool episode, but I guess my problem with it is don't relegate the references to Kanto. That was like the issue. Like when people were all hyped up about Brock and Misty showing back up in Alola, that's cool, but like we got like, what? We had Johto. We had Hoenn, we had Sinnoh, we had Unova. We got a bunch of other fucking characters. And the one we always keep seeing is Brock and Misty. That seems to be the most consistent of the references we get. Which, guess what that means? A bunch of Kanto and Johto references. Which is cool. I can appreciate it. But my problem is, 
is that we're not stop doing that's Gen One or shit. Like this reference and shit doesn't mean as much to me because it's only towards the one Gen that always gets it. Misty and Brock are the like Kanto references are the most consistent references. You get some of those almost in every region. So I'm not getting overly hyped just because you reference Kanto. If you give me a Hoenn reference, a Unova reference, a Sinnoh reference, I'd be cool with it. And I don't even like Sinnoh that much. But I would just appreciate it because it's something different. The other problem I have is that it's obvious the enemy's not going to be consistent with it. The fact that he was in Unova and they don't reference when he was in Unova, when he was in Sinnoh. The fact that he was in other areas in previous episodes and don't reference a goddamn thing, but references the fucking Lieutenant Surge shit is another axe in my point where I'm like, it's a cool reference, but it's another Gen 1-er type nonsense where you're paying more attention to the Gen 1 references, but you don't give a fuck about the, the rest of the regions that a lot of anime fans enjoy. Most people would tell you, like, Kanto was not even their favorite region in the anime. My favorite region in the anime is Hoenn. And Unova, I think, has grown on me a lot because I really like it. And that was the series I started reviewing with. Uh, so I like it a lot, too. But even though I recognize that probably overall, arguably, you can make points towards Diamond and Pearl, and I couldn't really refute you. That's my whole issue. Like, don't just reference that one region. Like, even the next episode is a Ditto episode that uses the same gimmick as the Duplica episodes did. And, but there's no reference to Duplica. See, the problem is that Pokemon has, like, over, what is it? Over 20 years, I want to say. Around 20 years or more of continuity. Or, like, re and it's not even, like, crazy. We're not talking about, like, One Piece levels of continuity. We're talking about really basic shit. We're talking about, here's a character here, here's a character there. So, of course... Why, oh, look, look, at the next episode is a Team Rocket-focused fo episode. Already not really something I'm overly excited of seeing. And then on two, it's a, re it's a reference to a sh an episode. I mean, you could have just included that character. Just show Duplica. I would have appreciated the Duplica reference more than you just doing, oh, here's another Ditto with the same problem. Or if you're going to do a Ditto episode, have it be a different type of Ditto episode. But it's the same gimmick of a Ditto episode. And I'm like, oh, come on, yo. We're better than this, right? We have met, we have more material than just rehashing a Ditto episode. And I guess the last thing I do want to address, because I think it's really cool and I don't want to forget, the Raboot stuff. It's obvious that it seems like his Raboot stage is exactly what I thought it is. He's the kid trying to be cool, but he's still a child at heart. So he still catches himself falling into things. And realistically, what I think it is that Raboot and Cinderace in general are going to be more battlers. They want to battle. They don't really... Like, the catching Pokemon shit is cool, but Raboot obviously his ulterior motive is to get Go to, like, enter the championships himself because he wants to battle. He really wants to fucking battle. Actually, I'm going to throw out a prediction. It wouldn't surprise me if later on he traded uh, Cinderace over. He's Either one or two things are going to happen. Either Go's going to enter it himself, or Cinderace is, or he's going to trade it. He's going to, Raboot's going to get traded over. It's going to be one of those two things. Because catching Pokemon to, to Raboot, I think it's cool, but I don't think he likes it anymore. I think he's more into, I think he likes to be in battles. I think this episode was the first hint to that story arc. He wants to be in battles more, and fucking Go's initiative is just to catch Pokemon. And I think, and you can even tell in this episode where Go mentions something along the lines of how uh, I couldn't do what you do. Pretty much saying that Go doesn't have the confidence to do what Ash does, but it didn't say that he wasn't interested in what Ash does. It would not surprise me if Go's whole thing throughout this this, his, this series is, although he still wants to catch Pokemon, it would be, he would start turning into a rival at some point. I think that's the direction with Go they're trying to go with. I know, boo. <laughs> because Rabu definitely is leaning in that direction anyway. So either he's going to get traded or Go's going to get pushed into it. And gradually gain more interest in it as it goes on. Um, the Ditto episode I'm not looking forward to because it's... For one, I still, like just because I, I thought Team Rocket was at their funniest, like... Was that last week? Last week was their funniest. 
Doesn't mean I still want to see a bunch of Team Rocket episodes. And it's a Ditto reference episode that doesn't reference Duplica in the Kanto region. And I'm like, bruh, you couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't do better than this. The same, like, and it's the same Ditto problem. It's not even like a new Ditto issue. It's the same problem. I wouldn't be against him catching a Ditto them catching a ditto, maybe that being an arc, and maybe that's the direction they're going. So I'm not going to write it off completely. I'm, to put it this way, I'm not excited about it. This episode was cool, cool fight, cool representation for Gengar and Pikachu and Raichu and Electro. I think, it's, I think it's one of Raichu's better episodes because of that, because it's not overly focused on him and Pikachu fighting all the time. He's still Raichu, he still has his personality, but he's not fucking overly focused on beating Pikachu. And I like the references to Kanto. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I don't like it. My issue is that it only it's always stops at fucking Kanto. It's always after we get through Brock and Misty, we fuck fuck anything past Johto. And I'm like, bro, come on, yo. People like the other regions. Hence why we wanted to see continuity. Because you got like three or four other girls and a couple other guys that people would like to see more of. Paul, Gary, Silent. Come on, Serena, Iris, uh, May, Dawn. What the fuck? You got other people we care about. That's why I say I don't get overly excited over Kanto reference. I get overly excited about other references. But I'm about to get interrupted, so let's game for the win, and I will catch you guys later. Peace. Oh.